Good morning, good morning. Salaam alaikum for those who are uh, from out of town. Uh, as I mentioned, Sharif El Meki, the uh, black male educator, social justice founder, uh, and also just recently left my principalship at Master Charter Shoemaker Campus after 11 years as the principal. It is an, um, thank you, thank you. It is uh, an amazing honor to be here with you in this incredible space and community. And I'm so grateful that the wonderful ISTE team invited me to speak to you this morning. And I'm absolutely thrilled that ISTE is back in my hometown of Philadelphia. Look, I'm from West Philadelphia, born and raised. Y'all know the rest. So if I inadvertently use the term join, which means anything and everything, please just bear with me, use the context clues, and you'll figure out what I mean. I know this is an amazing ed tech conference, but I want to mostly talk about mindsets, particularly in the shared space of schools and innovative technology. And when I say mindset, I mean how we think about our work, how we think about the students and communities that we serve, and what is our intention when we plan our lessons. Because as we tell our teachers and our team, every single lesson plan is a political document and speaks to how we think about kids. And every lesson we deliver is a political act, an act where our beliefs about students manifest themselves for all to see. So I was born to two activists. The woman is my mother, Aisha. She's a teacher. She was hesitant to join the technology world, but now today, she only speaks in emojis, and she only sends group text. God bless her. Who are those people, Mom? They're my friends. I remember when I first saw the other picture, I was 10 years old. The one with the black men lined up against the wall in their underwear. That was in West Philadelphia, too. My father is third from the right. Both of these parents raised me to think deeply about equity and justice. They taught me that I was responsible to my community and that solutions should always be pursued with community members. I originally wanted to become a lawyer to fight for people like my parents who were subjected to police brutality. But I later shifted to education where I could fight another type of system that was also, at times, for many kids, pretty brutal. My entire upbringing and my 26-year career working in three community schools has been focused on equity and educational justice. And I think technology fits perfectly into this type of conversation. How we think about and use technology reveals how we think about our students. How we approach this work means we can work to address the inequities in our schools that prove to be brutal towards some of our students. So I graduated from Overbrook High School, the same school Will Chamberlain and Will Smith, innovators in their own rights, graduated from. Overbrook High School was an all-black school. And even though it was back in the 80s, I had friends who had technology classes, but they looked very different from the technology classes I saw when the science clubs and the sports teams that I participated in went and visited other schools. My friends' classes had teachers and a system that was preparing them to work for someone else. They were in school to get a job. Often today, in many schools, that's the reason people are there, and that's the reason, and I'm not talking about the students. You see, no one knows about the inequity and the injustice in education quite like black and brown kids who have to visit the schools that were built with affluent kids in mind. We saw that those students on the so-called right side of the tracks were given technology that wasn't preparing them to work for anyone. They were being prepared to create jobs and create the world that they wanted to see. As a teacher, I had colleagues in different schools and districts, many friends, and I'm, I'm fortunate to have, have worked with many of them. Some of my colleagues were writing grants in the late nights to the Navy to see if they had any old computers to donate to their school. Then I had other uh, colleagues who were in affluent neighborhoods and they were purchasing new technology every single year, sometimes twice a year. Some colleagues were using smart boards for whiteboards. 
Others were using computers to teach children rudimentary word processing skills. My eyes opened up when we received a NASA Explorer School grant, and we were able to begin connecting students to NASA scientists for their lessons. But it's important to note that the disconnect doesn't just happen between wealthy districts and others with less resources. I've learned that the technological inequities also live within a single city, and often, too often, within one school, there can be a vast digital divide. Because again, it's about mindset. I want to challenge us to think about how innovation can be used differently to help communities battle inequities, not to exacerbate the injustice and lack of access already cemented in so many ways. Let's think for a moment about a mindset that could change our landscape. Chris Emden says that we all have to choose. We're going to work to damage the system of inequity, or we will work to damage children. You have to choose. You can't do both. Are we conscious about how our expectations for our students, our definition of what education means, permeates every single decision we make about children, their resources, and their access to technology? We have to recognize that leadership is action. It's not a position. So we all can make seismic shifts in whatever spaces we are in, if we want to. Suppose every single person did the hard and necessary work of self-reflection and confronting the race, class, and privilege trifecta before entering the edtech space or the classroom. And suppose they never, ever, ever stop thinking in that way. This is the mindset I want us to ensure we are using. I want us to use the ISTE standards as a lens and a measuring tool. I want us to look at the bar as rigorous yet achievable. So, what are ways we can hold ourselves accountable for the mindsets that our children need us to have? For one, we will recognize that technology is a tool, not a replacement. Years ago, I was invited to an EdTech Fest festival. And I went to the, not that no, it wasn't ISTE. I went to a workshop being led by 20 year olds, telling me that whatever gadget they had was teacher proof. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? And they said, well, you as the principal, you'd even be able to replace your teachers with some of these. I just tell some of them, stop talking to me. Don't disregard the sacred work. There will always be new and great technology, and we will always need great teachers. If we had. If we have the right North Star, we will hold ourselves accountable for ensuring technology was used to address digital divides and not exacerbate them. We will have our planning grants to determine how we use our platforms and our energy to help students of color live up to their own brilliance and potential, not catch up to affluent white children. Just suppose, as educators and leaders, we stop centering whiteness as the bar of excellence and use technology to help all students achieve the excellence that all humans have the potential to embody. Just imagine if our schools aren't full of people who put kids in front of remediation platforms all day and brag about their access to technology. And we should note that even if that remediation program has a cute animal that gyrates, it's very different than the technology that educators are putting in front of kids who are thought to be on pace to rule the world. It's the difference between educators who are providing access to, to the technology black and brown children need to change the world instead of only imagining those same students as working for others. If you and I consciously use our platforms and access to the powerful tools that technology represents, it can be amazing. But like any other source of power, it has to be used with race, class, and privilege in mind. I implore you, don't leave black and brown and poor children behind, and don't give our children the innovative hand-me-downs. Ask ourselves, what would it mean if communities of color received laptops, internet, software in the early stages, but without at the same time using them as human guinea pigs? We call connectivity vital to success, yet often poor urban rural areas receive consistent and strong broadbands well after affluent schools and neighborhoods. We need true leadership in this space, leaders like ISTE and leaders like you. A huge part of the ISTE standards is being a lead learner, and there is no learning without reflection. And reflection means that we are looking at and learning about ourselves 
first and foremost. That's why it's reflection. It is a mirror. I'm going to butcher Alexander the Great's uh, quote, and I'm using it for us. Inequity is not afraid of an army of lions led by a sheep. Inequity is afraid of an army of sheep led by a lion. We are in this technological and innovative space where we need true champions. We need true innovators who start and end their days and work with equity and justice in mind. And we need true lions, bold and tenacious lions, who want to partner with and help to uplift communities instead of being a tool for remediation and marginalization. Be lions, but don't be lions leading sheep. Be lions leading other lions. Thank you. Have a wonderful time at ISTE and enjoy Philadelphia.